Grab your Bible and get ready for a great study. This is Talkin' Scripture. Hey everybody, welcome to Talkin' Scripture. My name is Gary and I'm so thankful to be joining you here tonight as I'm coming to you live from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. And what an absolutely gorgeous day. It's been outside. The temperature's a little bit chilly, but uh, it's still nice. It's still nice outside. And the sun is shining and the leaves are starting to come back on the trees. As you look into the into the hills and the mountains, you can kind of see shades of green coming in. So it's nice. And I know that there's some people out there that's still digging out from snow. And if that's where you are, keep it up that way. As we don't need it here at East Tennessee. But welcome to the broadcast. I'm so excited to be back here on, on Spreaker with you for Talking Scripture. And it is my hope and prayer and desire that if it's the Lord's will to get back into doing this each Tuesday night again because I love studying the Word of God and I love preaching the Word of God, reading it and, and I hope that through the broadcast today and any other broadcast we have that something like that is going to do in these broadcasts to help encourage you in your walk because we all need a encouragement in our walk and that's kind of what we're talking about tonight. The topic we have here is is when discouragement sets in and um I do I do work in a nursing home on Sundays. I go into a local nursing home and, and hold Sunday services there and get to visit with the residents and, and do a little singing, do a little preaching, and it's so much fun doing that. And these people that is in the nursing homes is just wonderful to be with. But a lot of times I see a lot of discouragement setting in there. And I shared these verses um, last week with them. And I hope it's an encouragement to you. And we're going to be in the Old Testament tonight, so if you got your Bibles, I encourage you to go to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings, and we're going to be looking at chapters 18 and 19 tonight. And uh, it's going to be a good study. We're going to look at Elijah. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to share this story out of a book entitled Swindoll's Ultimate Book of Illustrations and Quotes. And the quote that I want to share is taken on the topic of discouragement. And he says, as a recently retired man was sitting on his porch down in Kentucky and his social security check was delivered, he went to the mailbox to retrieve it and thought to himself, is this all my life is going to be from this time on? Just sitting on the porch waiting for my next social security check to arrive? It was a discouraging thought for this man. So he took out a legal pad and began to write down all the gifts, all the blessings, all the talents, and everything that he had going for him, and he listed them all, even the small things. For example, he included the fact that he was the one and only man in the world who knew his mother's recipe for fried chicken in which she used 11 different herbs and spices. He went down to the local restaurant and asked if he could get a job cooking their chicken, and very soon that chicken became the most popular item on the menu. He opened his own restaurant in Kentucky, then he opened a string of restaurants, and eventually sold the franchise to a national organization for millions of dollars. He became their public representative and continued in that role until his death. Anybody in the chat room know who we're talking about? I'm sure you do. That's right, it's Colonel Sanders, Harlan Sanders, and the chain was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Discouragement. We all get there. We all we all at times have a struggle with that and we start we start worrying about things. We start letting things get us down. Grab your Bibles, go to First Kings chapter eighteen. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more talking scripture. <laughs> I just heard this funny joke. <laughs> it's a great joke. Are you living your life to please God? You won't believe how funny this is. No, I, I really shouldn't tell this kind of joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I can't tell you. Or are you living to please others? Okay, 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 okay. Pretend it's not me telling the joke, okay? You're going to love this. Is your love for God only worth a joke? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. 
Kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration, live weekday mornings. Let's get back for our Bible study. You are listening to Talkin' Scripture. All right, welcome back. I like that Lifeline Pro piece, Productions piece. You know, well, there ain't nothing wrong with jokes, but, you know, sometimes I think we got to get down and be serious, right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to jump into the study that we have tonight. Uh, Welcome those that are in the chat room. I'm so thankful that you're joining me here tonight. And uh, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this day, this wonderfully beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. And I thank you for each person that's here in the chat room tonight, and I thank you for each person that's that's going to be listening to this at a later time. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have to gather around your word, and I ask now, Lord, that you open our hearts and minds to hear from you tonight, God. Father, help us to hear your word. Help us to apply your word as we seek to grow and become the people, the men and women that you would have us to be. Father, I ask as humbly as I know how that you forgive me where I failed you and that you speak your words through me tonight. This is your time. Use it to bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had days where it seemed that there wasn't anything going right? I think we all do. And if you're like me, days like that seems to come right after there was a big victory or a big milestone or a big thing had happened in your life. It's almost as if if the devil just can't handle you getting a success and he wants to do something to knock you back down, to knock you down to size maybe. Well, it kind of was the same for Elijah. He was one of the prophets in the Old Testament and we can read about him here in the book of, of First Kings. And he is someone that is just awesome to read about. I encourage you to go reading through the book of First Kings and the book of Second Kings and Chronicles. And, and, you know, a lot of times we don't spend much time looking at things in the Old Testament because we don't feel it's really all that relevant. But there's nothing further from the truth because you can see a lot of, of issues that these Old Testament prophets and Old Testament people had to deal with. And you could say, hey, wait a minute, I'm dealing with these same kind of things. So it's going to help you and encourage you that if God worked this way for people in the Old Testament, we could know and trust that God's going to keep our best interest at heart. And Elijah here, Elijah's a, a, a guy that, that he spoke his mind. He he did what God was telling him to do, and he made some enemies along the way. And we're going to focus in in First Kings chapter nineteen. We're going to focus in here in a little bit. Don't go there just yet. We're going to focus in that here in just a little while because we're going to see the events that happened that led up to Elijah getting discouraged. And if we look back here in the book of in in chapter eighteen. We see where Elijah was was challenging King Ahab, who was the king at that time. He was challenging them and the people of Israel that they need to figure out who it is that they want to worship. Israel, of course, God's chosen people, but they fell into pagan idol worship. They were worshiping Baal. They were worshiping other false gods. And Elijah was about to challenge them and challenge that faith that they had in those false gods. And he was going to prove to them once and for all that there is only one God. And that God is is, is God, is Jesus. And we read in verse number 17, I, I, in for verse 17 of 1 Kings chapter 18, it says, And it came to pass when Ahab, who was the king, by the way, saw Elijah, who was the prophet, that Ahab had said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Ahab, he was, his wife was one of the leaders in getting this, ba- this worship of Baal and this worship of other false gods and idols. She was one of the ones responsible for getting this going there in Israel. So Ahab, he's saying, hey, there's the guy that's trouble in Israel. You're the one that's making trouble for my wife and for Israel. And verse 18 says, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou... And thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. 
Boy, don't you wish you had the courage to talk to people the way that Elijah just did here? Here's Ahab say, hey, there's the guy that troubles Israel. And, and Elijah answers and says, it ain't me that's troubling Israel. He says, it's you. You and your father's house are the ones that, ha that have troubled Israel. You have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. Man, there's some people I'd love to walk up to and say something like that to. But that's where the trouble for, for Elijah started, right there. He stepped on the king's toes. He challenged the king, and the king's going to get upset. We're going to, let's look a little bit more here. Look with me, starting in verse 19. Elijah's continuing, saying, Now therefore send, and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So after, after he steps on his toes, he said, Hey, you know what? Gather everybody together, all Israel, all those that are the, the, the priests and the prophets of these false gods and these idols. Gather them all together, and we're going to go to Mount Carmel. And they're going to have a showdown. You could almost hear that suspenseful music playing in the background. And verse 20 tells us that Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. So they all went and they met Elijah there. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Verse 22, Then Elijah sent unto the people, or then, Eli then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. So here's Elijah. He's, he's challenging the people. He's saying, How long are you going to suffer between, or how long are you going to struggle between two opinions? between two thoughts. You either worship God or you worship Baal. How many different gods are we worshiping in America today? How many different idols are we worshiping in America today? And I'm saying right now that we need to make the choice who we're going to follow. Just like Elijah challenged Israel, I'm challenging everybody that's listening now, who are you going to follow? Are you going to follow God? Or are you going to follow the idols and the false gods of this world? Mm. Then he says here in verse 23, Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut into pieces and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under. So Elijah's saying, all right, this is going to be the test. We're going to see who the true God is. They're each going to get a bull. They're going to cut it up. They're going to lay it on the altar. And basically what's going to happen is each one of them is going to call down fire from, from their gods. And whichever God gives fire, that's the true God. That's the challenge that, that Elijah had for these men. And then we read here in verses 25 on down through verse number, let's see, on down through verse number 29. We see that the prophets of Baal went first and they cut their bull up and they put it on the altar and they started crying out to their God to, to bring fire down from heaven and nothing happened. And then they started dancing around and making a spectacle of them, themselves. And nothing happened. And in verse 27, Elijah started mocking them. He says, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking or he's pursuing or he's on a journey. Or maybe he sleepeth and must be awakened. Can't you just see Elijah sitting over there laughing at, at what's going on? And these people even got to the point where they started cutting themselves trying to get their God to answer, but their God never answered. Why? Because he's not a God. It's nothing but a false idol. And these people couldn't see it. And people today are blinded by these false idols that we're worshiping. 
And then Elijah came and got his bull ready, cut it up and put it on the altar. But he takes it a step for, further. He takes four big, big things, big pitchers, big barrels of water, and he soaks the bull. He soaks the wood. He soaks the altar in as much that the water was filled up in the trenches and was spilling over. And then he prayed. And then fire shot down from heaven. And the scripture tells us, consume the bull, consume the altar, consume the water. That must have been one heck of a powerful strike. And then we read here in verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. He, the Lord, he is God people saw that great miraculous thing and they worshiped God I'm sure Elijah was at a spiritual high at that point I'm sure he knew God would come through I'm sure that he knew God would act because he knew that God is the only God but I'm sure he was at a spiritual high the people fell down and they worshiped God and then Elijah said unto them take the prophets of Baal let not one of them escape and they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. Elijah killed the prophets of Baal because the prophets of Baal proved that their God wasn't a true God, that their God was nothing more than a false God, a false idol. Now let's get over to chapter number 19. Starting in verse number 1. And Ahab told Jezebel, so Ahab the king goes running home to his wife, Jezebel. He told her all the things that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Now remember I mentioned earlier that Jezebel, the, the king's wife, she was instrumental in getting this pagan idol worship set up there in Israel that got them to, to get off track. Verse 2 tells us, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So she, got the, she sends out this letter and this messenger, and, and Elijah gets this note, and she says, Hey, tomorrow at this time, you're going to be dead. You're going to be just like those prophets that, that you killed. The prophets that I had set up, the worship, the idol worship that I had set up, you're going to be just like them prophets. So man, I'll bet Elijah's life just went boom, just went down. He was probably still celebrating the things that happened on a spiritual high, and then he got that death threat. What did he do? What did he do? Verse number three says and when he saw that when he saw that letter he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba which belongeth to Judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough now O Lord take my take away my life for I am not better than my father's Elijah got scared he got up he took off running he went I've I've read some in some commentaries that Beersheba was approximately 80 80 some miles away from where he was he ran 80 miles for his life him and his servants and he got to Beersheba and he left his servant there and he went another day away out of fear for what was going to happen and he was so discouraged he was so distraught that he said you know what I might as well die I might as well die this is it I've had enough he gave up he gave up what a sad state that could be he couldn't take any more have you been there have you been there I've been there in that spot. Not that I, I wanted to die, but I've been in that spot where I was about ready to give up and say, you know what? I've had enough. And that's where Elijah was. Then if we jump down here to verse number 10, the angel of the Lord came to Elijah 
and he encouraged him to eat and he encouraged him for to eat and to drink and then he went on to Mount Horeb the Mount of God and we mountain of God and we read in verse number 10 and he said I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even only I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So there he is talking with God, and he's laying out his problem with God. He's saying, God, I've been so jealous for you. I've been, I've been working so hard for you. I've been trying to get Israel back on a straight and narrow, but they forsook you. They threw down your altars. They threw down your covenant. They, they killed the prophets. And God, now I'm the only one left, and they're out to kill me. And then God says to him, See, God, God is so good that he knows he needs to be encouraged. He knows he needs encouragement. And God said to him in verse 11, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire... A still a small voice. See, before God can encourage Elijah, he's got to show him where he is not, where God is not. God wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. Sometimes God chooses to work in those items. But for this case, he didn't. And I think there's a, a application there. Because you see, when things in our life is 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 when disasters are happening in our life they take precedence in our life they they get our attention and then that gets us away from our faith sometimes for elijah it may have felt like he was going through a natural disaster when he was running for his life but god wasn't in that he wasn't in them wanting to kill wanting to kill elijah but when God spoke in that still small voice, Elijah knew that that was God. Look at verse number 13 of First Kings chapter 19. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle or in his coat. And he went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thy altars and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I even only I am left. And they seek me, they seek my life to take it away. God was encouraging him. God was speaking to him. And the Lord said unto him, Go and return on thy way. To the wilderness of Damascus. See, God was encouraging him to get back in the saddle and to start riding on. We read in verses 15, 16, and 17, we read where God gives him a job to do. He had to go out and he had three people that he had to anoint as king, as kings in various countries. So God say, hey, I'm not done with you yet. This is what you need. You need this direction. You need me to go and to tell you to go out and do this stuff. I'm going to be with you. And then he not only encourages him by giving him a job to do, but he encourages him by revealing that he wasn't indeed the only one left. Verse 18 says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So God's saying, All right. He said it's okay to, to to it's okay to be to be jealous for me. It's okay to go out and to and to do what I've called you to do, but this is what I want you to do now. This is what I want you to do now. I want you to go out and do these works. And you aren't the only one left. There's more. 
friends, when you're going through a time of discouragement, you're not the only one that's being discouraged. You're not the only one that's struggling. You're not the only one that's left. Satan's going to whisper that in your ear all day long. He's going to say, hey, no one else is struggling like you. No one else is going through what you're going through. But the fact is, there's others. Friends, when your life seems to be falling apart, when you seem to be getting discouraged, that's not the time to run away. That's the time to dig in. To dig in, get your foothold, get a stronghold. Stand up and follow what God's called you to do and keep doing what God told you to do. God sent Elijah right back into the mission field. And that's what he's going to do for each one of us. Are you going through a time of discouragement today? Do you feel like no one's listening to your message? Do you feel like no one is is no one cares about you no more? To feel like you're going through a natural disaster. And cry out to God. Cry out to Him and allow Him to encourage you. And allow Him to get you put back on the right track to be doing what He's called you to do. Because He's ready, willing, and able. Sometimes, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I've always, even now as an adult, I've never really been one that liked thunderstorms, especially thunderstorms at night. When you see the lightning flashing outside your windows and you hear the rumbling of thunder, sometimes we get fearful. And when I was a kid, I'd go running into mom and dad's room and crawl into bed with mom and dad because you just knew that everything was going to be all right right there. The storm was raging there just like it was in my bedroom. But you knew it would be all right. Friends, sometimes you just need to crawl up into the lap of God and allow Him to encourage you and allow Him to give you the strength to keep going on. Father, I just thank You for Your Word today, God. I thank You for this example that we have, Lord. An example of discouragement, but also an example of Your encouragement, God. Father, I pray for each person that's here right now in the chat room and each person that will be listening to this, God. I just pray that you you work in our lives, God. If there's someone here that's never accepted you, I just pray that you give them the strength to cry out to you and confess their sins. Your word says that if you confess your sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, maybe there's somebody here that needs that encouragement right now. They've been working so hard for you, but something got them down. Father, I just pray that you wrap your arms around them, Lord, and that you bring them back to that right place with you. Father, for the person that's right in the middle of your will, I pray that you give them the strength and the courage to stay there. And Father, I ask that you go with us now and you bring us back at your next appointed time. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. If you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior, I encourage you to do that. If you want to know more about that, what it means to become a Christian, drop me an email at scripturelinks at gmail.com or swing by our website, myscripturelinks.com and use that contact us button and uh, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to tell you what it means to be a Christian and how to become a Christian. Also want to encourage you to to listen to our other broadcast here on Spreaker. It's the Scripture Links Daily Dose of Inspiration. It's Monday through Friday around 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's when I get up and go to work. And uh, so I encourage you to listen. That's a great way to get your day started off right. And uh, you can also find it on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher if you use an uh, Android phone. So I encourage you to check that out. And also, I hope that you come back and join me right back here again next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. as we once again get into God's Word. Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you and then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.
Thanks for listening. Check out our website, www.myscripturelinks.com.